Hello, everybody. My name is Mitch Klingo. I'm a career education coordinator with the Korean Experiential Learning Department. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected how we gather in person throughout many aspects of our lives. And this has also greatly affected how we connect and network with potential employers. As with much of our lives, the ways employers connect with future applicants has moved to the virtual spaces uh, that we're all living in. Events such as job fairs, networking nights, and employer open houses are now being hosted online. Networking can already be stressful and this new dynamic adds new hurdles that we must address. So I'll be sharing some advice on how to prepare for these new events. This is my event checklist that I'll be going through. We'll start with preparing for research and creating an elevator pitch, talking about how to set up your setting for the best first impression online, what aspects you should learn for the platform you'll be using, how to manage expectations for both yourself and the employer, how to find that time to talk during the event, and of course, follow up. When it comes to any aspect of work search, whether it's networking, interviews, or job applications, being prepared is your number one best friend all the time. Start with doing your research. Research each company beforehand that you know is going to be attending what event uh, is there. That way you can kind of create a list of who's your priorities, your number one, two, and three picks, uh, and focus your time and effort on really understanding how to make a good impression with them. Find this info through company websites, LinkedIn and other social media, or industry publications. Your goal here is to prepare intelligent, insightful questions uh, that allows you to deepen the conversation that's happening. You want to avoid anything obvious that can be found on the website. What's new about these is that you also want to develop your online presence. There's a chance that employers will have multiple um, uh, people there, and one of them might be research, doing background research on uh, potential uh, applicants. So you want to make sure that you have a strong LinkedIn portfolio uh, and that you know what's going to come up if somebody Googles your name. So I've included a couple links there uh, with Larry Isles, uh, how to create a strong LinkedIn portfolio, as well as an online tool called Brand Yourself that will allow you to give yourself a quick um, portfolio review if uh, somebody tries Googling your name. Through your company research, you should be able to identify how companies believe they stand out from their competitors. You want to use this information to craft an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is a way to introduce yourself in 30 seconds or less that connects the unique features of yourself with the story of the employer. So you're going to start by introducing yourself in a way that defines you. Talk about something in your past or present, uh, as well as what makes you unique. You're going to take this small piece of information and you're going to weave it in with what you believe your future fit might look like. And this is where you're going to take elements from the company that you've just learned through your research um, and tie those two things together. You're then going to use that um, to ask a question that's going to deepen the conversation uh, and lead into um, the start of kind of a new connection or a new re employer relationship. So the example I've provided here is, hi, I'm Mitch, very excited to meet you. As long as I can remember, I've wanted to help people in a real and grounded way. Since so many people struggle financially and since my strong suit is math, uh, I think finance will allow me to do this. I'm looking to find an organization as both, that has both great career opportunities and great client services. Uh, so can you talk about any new services that your company has come out with to help people through the pandemic? Your elevator pitch, you want to be able to say it uh, a few times, you want to be able to have it come across conversationally, and you want to be comfortable saying it. So definitely write it and practice it and modify it so that you have conversational language uh, and it flows naturally when you introduce yourself in an event. Next up is how to set up your video to give you the best first impression. Uh, we typically dress up well in person and we introduce ourselves with a good handshake. Uh, we're missing those these days. Instead, we are captured on a screen through a camera. So we want to use that to make the best impression that we can. Um, so first, uh, your background should be as neutral as possible, ideally just a plain wall. If you do have stuff in the background, make sure it's tidy up, close any doors or cupboards or closets, pick things up on the floor. If your bed's in the background, make it. Um, or consider a Zoom background that looks realistic and professional. The idea here is that you don't want it, uh, your background to take attention away from your face. You don't want the employer to be distracting, distracted and looking over your shoulder while uh, you're talking with them. For yourself, 
very important that you put the camera at eye level. Uh, you don't want it from below, uh, looking up your nose or extending your forehead into a five head. Uh, you don't want it above you, uh, looking down and making it seem really strange. Uh, have it at eye level, uh, also because when you're looking at the camera, that gives the impression of eye contact. You want your light, sor light source to be in front of you, so not behind or beside. Um, you cannot appear backlit or get what's called raking lighting from the side. Um, have it uh, in front of you so that it lights up your face uh, and makes you kind of easy to see and easy to read. Uh, and with the body language, you want to make sure that you're able to sit up straight, so have a comfortable chair, uh, as well as make sure that your expressions are noticeable, so you're not too far away um, or too close. Um, so have your, your profile in the shot set up properly. Um, with uh, our new online formats, there's tons of videos on YouTube for how to look better on Zoom. So just Google that and you can find some great advice out there for this, this piece. Next is get familiar with the technology. Um, a lot of us are using Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Big Blue Button. Um, there's a lot of different um, spheres that we can operate in, and it's your job to be familiar with the tech. Uh, most of us can get online pretty easily, and if things run smoothly, we're going to be okay. However, you want to be prepared in case something happens. What are you going to do in case your audio cuts out, in case your video cuts out? in case you can't hear the host. Um, how can you resolve those issues on your end um, without too much trouble? So play around with the audio and visual set settings so that you're familiar in case something goes wrong, because uh, it often does. And the more people that use these tools, the more their servers will be flooded and the more errors that will come up, unfortunately. Uh, for things like Zoom um, or other platforms with other kind of features or tools, get familiar with those. Uh, on Zoom, it's things like raise hand or the recently expanded reactions uh, or even understanding the chat box, how to chat to everybody versus somebody individual, how to upload files, things like that. Uh, I mentioned this just uh, a second ago, but eye contact equals looking at the camera. Um, so understand kind of where your screen setup is and what other people see uh, the different places you're looking at. Stay muted. Um, this is common tech etiquette right now or, or virtual etiquette. Um, if you're one of those people who struggles with unmuting yourself uh, and then you just forget to, to mute yourself after, that's uh, something I do quite often, um, you can unmute yourself by holding the space bar. Uh, and then as soon as you're done talking, you let go of the space bar and you're back to muted. Uh, so an easy trick to, to not make any faux pas. Make sure you know how to change your name. Um, you might have some kind of default login or a family login or something like that, and your name might not be yours in the chat box. So make sure as soon as you log in uh, that you change your name to your first name and last name. Again, very important for networking that they remember you and your name so that they can follow up with you if needed. Um, uh, and last here is know how to share your screen. Um, if you're lucky enough to get a one-to-one -one, um, with an employer, they may ask you to see your resume or your LinkedIn um, or something that you want to show them. Uh, know how to share your screen. Have your document up already so that you don't um, uh, waste time. So play around with the technology that you're going to be using for these events so that you feel comfortable um, on the day of. All of this is very new to many of us, and we are still figuring it out. Employers are still new to this, and employers are still figuring it out. So when you're at these events, um, such as TRU's accounting night that's coming up um, in September, um, each employer might do things a little bit differently because this may be still among the first times that they've done this. Um, so you might show up for one of these networking nights and one employer might be calling on uh, students individually to speak. Others, it might be a group discussion. Um, others, it might be um, students are jumping in whenever they find their time. Uh, every kind of room or every situation might be a little bit differently as we kind of navigate our new normal. Uh, we're still figuring out what works best, so it means we're going to be trying uh, different things to see how they fit. So for us, we really want to manage our expectations. So be flexible and adaptable going into these events, knowing that there is no best way to do things right now. Um, there is no way that I can um, 
uh, say you should anticipate or predict a certain uh, the way a certain event will go. Um, it's very much up in the air right now. So you can practice your skill of being flexible and, and being able to adjust with uh, the situation and the needs that are demanded. Be curious and creative. Um, follow up with questions. Uh, ask things that you're genuinely interested about. Find ways uh, to engage with the employers. Ask interesting and creative questions that, are, as I mentioned before, are going to deepen that conversation uh, and lead to new kind of uh, uh, new ways. Learn the hidden rules, uh, the new hidden rules. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, Reddit or a Zoom etiquette um, is keep yourself muted. Um, there's going to be other new hidden rules uh, or social conventions, um, things like where you do have to kind of jump in or uh, try to kind of um, shoulder your way to, to get some time with an employer. Um, whether it's okay to invite an uh, employer to a breakout room to get your one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, lastly, go easy on employers and yourselves. Um, take away some of those expectations to perform perfectly. Uh, the first time. We don't usually do that. It takes us a while to warm up and we want to be able to play around with things. Um, especially on Zoom, it disrupts um, our normal conversation patterns. There's a lot of talking over each other as we kind of find our pacing and our timing for these conversations. Uh, and don't be hard on yourself or employers for doing that. That's normal in this new sphere. So, um, you can we can relax ourselves and get us give ourselves a bit of a break around some of these things during the event the game is all about how to take space for yourself and make space for others you want to do this through your prepared tools figuring out when is the appropriate time for you to jump in and introduce yourself and get your time with that employer um, you want to have prepared questions so that if there is kind of a general discussion or one-to-one, -one, you have a prepared question that is able to, um, that allows you to jump in right away and create that connection and deepen that conversation. Um, you want to make sure that if they want to find more about you, they can uh, find your LinkedIn or your resume very quickly, that you're able to kind of upload it into the chat or provide a link uh, as fast as you can, um, or even share your screen uh, if you happen to be in a one-on-one. -on -one. So you really want to make sure that you can jump in and feel comfortable jumping in because of the preparation um, when you get your opportunity. And it will take a little bit about just feeling out the rooms, feeling out the events, um, getting used to kind of the, the flow of uh, these new uh, social situations and then take your space. Uh, but also make space for others. Don't monopolize. Um, make sure that you don't uh, ruin that first impression by going on a little bit too long or uh, or taking up other people's time as well. Some additional advice for these events, uh, bring a positive attitude. Um, positivity and smiling is contagious. Uh, it helps other people remember us and like us. Uh, there's a lot of negativity going around in these stressful times, um, lost opportunities such a, uh, and such things. Um, so instead, try to figure out how you can put a positive spin on things. Talk about new opportunities or new services that are coming about, um, and that will help you stand out with employers. Continually engage in your active listening skills or using your active listening skills, things like smiling, nodding, taking notes. Employers will be watching your video even as they're talking. So make sure they can, uh, they can see you paying attention and being engaged on your end of the camera. Uh, common advice, uh, a common piece of advice for many of these events is warming up before going to your first pick. Um, a lot of us are nervous or anxious and that can cause us to kind of like stutter over our first questions. Um, and that's very, very normal. So we often advise going to your third or fourth pick first, warming up. And once you're comfortable um, speaking and you're in the flow of conversation, then head towards your first pick at a job fair or networking night.
Uh, if you can, if you've got those prepared questions, dive right in as soon as the chat begins. Um, there's something called a recency bias where we remember the first people to stand out. Um, so jump in with those prepared questions and be the first one to engage and employers will be more likely to remember that. Uh, also shows that you're prepared and you've done your research. Use professional language, not only while you're talking, but also in the chat boxes. Um, keep out any shorthand text speech uh, or perhaps any uh, emojis. The language that you write with is going to be reflected of, reflective of uh, how you engage in a professional setting. So anything you do, any way that you're interacting will be evaluated in a professional context. Um, get contact info and follow up information. You might not have the get the best opportunity to connect in some of these events as there can be a lot of participants, but make sure you know who your go to person is after the event so that you can ask for uh, further connection or more one to one. Many of the events are the start of a relationship. You're just simply kind of planting a seed uh, and the these follow up interactions are you growing that plant, growing that relationship so that you can develop opportunities later on. Or if you're very fortunate, be prepared for a one to one. Um, this will allow you to better showcase your, your resume or your LinkedIn or, or talk more about yourself. Um, so for that one to one, I would suggest being from being able to answer three questions. Um, tell me about yourself. Why do you want to work for our company and why should we hire you? If you can come up with answers for those three questions, you'll be well prepared in uh, with answers for any kind of one to one conversation. After the event, make sure you follow up. This is that watering that that plant, watering that seed so it can grow into uh, a, a better connection or potentially an opportunity. So connect and comment on social media, use relevant hashtags if they're part of the event. Connect and thank them on LinkedIn uh, because you've got that information uh, to find out who the right person to connect to is. Uh, and do this with short, quick short messages that include specific callbacks to something you learned or found useful or something particular to a conversation you had to an individual. You can also include an ask if you wish to connect further. So if you're looking for an informational interview or um, to them for them to review your resume, uh, this is your chance to kind of deepen that conversation. A lot of these um, uh, networking nights or job fairs, companies will follow up with their own open houses uh, so that get that information so that you um, can have another opportunity to uh, meet these people and further solidify that connection. So that is my checklist for how to prepare for networking events. Uh, going through this list, making sure you're prepared will alleviate some of that anxiety, will allow you to put your best foot forward and give you the best chance at making new connections and uncovering opportunities um, for your job search. If you have any questions or would like any follow-up, feel free to connect with us at the Career and Experiential Learning Department. Thank you for listening. Take care.